Hello and welcome to the Customer Centricity Corner brought to you by Customer Attuned. My name is Peter Lavers and in this series I'm discussing different aspects of customer centricity in the B2B sector with a range of experts and practitioners. Our focus in these short, about 12 minute discussions is on the practicalities of making customer centricity real rather than it just being a theory or a set of good intentions that you want to do. Our subject today is how to recognize and appreciate customer loyalty in the B2B context. I'm delighted to introduce Amanda Cromhout from Truth, a leading global loyalty consultancy, and Mark Leclerc from Stream Loyalty, who are a tech-enabled loyalty consultants. Mark and Amanda, I think everyone who's passionate about customer centricity would agree that loyalty is a good thing. When your customers are businesses, however, rather than consumers, there are different factors and dynamics at play. What would you describe as good practice in B2B? And initially thinking about kind of mainstream B2B, where uh, a company has lots of kind of moderate value business clients. So thanks, Peter. I think um, if we think about the medium sized B2B rather than some of the big corporates, We've got to remember at the end of the day, there's a lot of the individuals inside of those companies who will benefit from such a loyalty proposition. They're consumers like it, like um, like you and me, so to speak. But actually what you reward for will be obviously different than a consumer program. So when you're deciding on the benefit set, there's literature gal galore out there. Like it's it's we all know what appeals to yourself. We've got to. We've got so much choice to pick from, but then at the end of the day, we also need to offer choice that's relevant to help the business. So you can have a suite of benefits that are interesting to me as an individual, as the recipient of a B2B loyalty proposition, but also a suite of benefits that are relevant for my business. But what you reward against is either transactional or there's behavioral activities such as attending a training program on the product so you can better sell it or better use it or better um, attend events that um, you're hosting. So there's behavioral and there's transactional. Yeah, I concur with that. And uh, you know, we also build out our tech so that we can reward not just transactional behavior, but actions, which is probably much more relevant in the b2b world because you do have so many more stakeholders within a business who uh, you know some of them are decision makers some of them not decision makers but they're vested and it's all about understanding what behaviors you're trying to influence and then how you reward those and then from a sort of how there are two parts to sort of loyalty is one is how you re how you reward and then what you reward with and of course you've got the complexities of how do i make it who who am i rewarding who makes the decision on that where does it go is it relevant do you have issues with what you can and can't accept uh could should it be should it be something that helps a customer's sustainability criteria so actually have it all about sustainability or could it should it be giving them back a discount off of a future transaction with you. So you've got so much more complexity than you have in the in the consumer world wrapped up in 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 the in the in the B2B world. So practically uh, applying that then Mark, um, there there's the technology to to gather the data I guess and and actually then uh, build that in in that in that more complex kind of layered way. Well, as I as I like to say, there's, a, there's an old saying that engineers love, which is what gets what gets measured gets done. And by the same token, if anything that you can measure that has a value to you as a business, well, therefore, if it's got a value to you, it's got an, a certain behaviour can have an equal value to some sort of transaction. For example, as as Amanda said, you're attending an event, coming on a training program. You might be an engineering business where if I can, if everyone gets takes training on my equipment, I know that that A gets it used and B gets it more likely to be replaced. Therefore, that has a high value to me. So it's nothing to do with transactional behavior. It's actually, I want you to attend a training course. So it's about understanding what is of value to the business. And if you can measure it, then a metric can be applied to it and a reward can then be applied to that metric. Does that make sense? Brilliant. Uh, Amanda, anything to add 
that? No, I'll just back it up. I mean, I have the luxury of being um, a judge on the International Loyalty Awards, and we've seen, for example, uh, brands like IBM win the win in the B two B space in the B two B category simply tuned into exactly what Mark's just said. You know, some of the major um, activities around the program that they won it for is around this training, you know, empowering all those sales force to be able to sell more IBMs to more, more companies and more people because they know how this, how this piece of technology works because they went to training and they get rewarded for that over and above lots of other things like more sales and so forth. And that's a transactional piece. But obviously there's more than training, but Mark and I have both used that as an example because actually it's one of the most powerful examples. Thanks for that. That's that's really interesting because that's a different spin on on what people think about as kind of loyalty programs. Um, can we uh, switch our attention a little bit now? Um, uh, thinking about big B2B, uh, complex multi-year contracts that companies are often tied into for that period, um, key accounts where um, the company gets a huge amount of its revenue from just a few uh, of its of its key clients. Um, what what do you think um, are the differences, the nuances, the uh, um, the, the ways of of working with those companies in building and appreciating loyalty? I think the our favourite approach that we've had the luxury of being able to do with quite a few B2B clients in the bigger environment is more around almost covert tiering where you you take a traditional sales approach. As you say, there's less less companies that you're dealing with, but you understand the the amount of business they're worth to you and your top segment, your covert segment might have two companies in it. Um, but they are so vastly different than, say, the next 10 companies who are vastly different from the long tail of, say, 200 companies. It might be as small as that. And in that covert tiering, you know, if you pull on, we tend to sim overly simplify it as a value proposition. But if you pull on three levers, it's the relationship, whether it's the key account managers, you know, your long tail of 200 customers maybe only have access to online or telephonic account management support. But the top tier has access to the C-suite and the middle, the next 10 have access to a key account manager. So there's the relationship side. There's obviously the financial side. So if you're hit, hitting rebates and triggers or if you're doing early settlement agreements that are more favorable, you can be rewarded more handsomely and so on. So the financial pieces are given, um, but it's it can be wrapped into this value proposition. And then there's the servicing. So, you know, maybe if it's a product that has a warranty, the higher tier gets the extended warranty rather than having to apply for more warranty cover or um, online ordering. You've got more capability in your in the BI reports that get served back to you if you're a higher tier. And if you're in the long tail of the lower tiers, you get potentially a reduced uh, view of the BI. So that's that's something that we've done a lot of in really various um, companies, whether it's in the electrical engineering environment, whether it's in the farming environment, where it's just vastly different types of customers. But actually, as long as you understand the channel and you understand the complexity of that channel, you can make it worthwhile from a business point of view rather than almost a loyalty marketing point of view. You just go back to the roots of the business requirements of the of servicing that company. So for me, the bigger corporates is much more aligned to customer centricity principles than maybe some of the smaller organizational loyalty structures. Yeah, I'd back that up and say that it's really it begins with understanding your customer because they're all different. And I think the word loyalty um, people go back to a consumer perspective and think of something quite binary, you know, buy something, get something. Oh, that won't work for our business because it's about relationships and complexity. And that, absolutely it is, you know, you just take your customer base in a business. There's going to be compared to a consumer brand, you're going to have far less of them, but they're going to be way more valuable and they're going to be incredibly different stretching from key, key, you know, the top two or three key customers who are in your Pareto rule going to give you 80% right the way down your tail. And I think too many people's go, oh, well, we don't need to worry about that. You know, we've got customers sorted. We've got key account managers, but actually you do need to worry about that for, so for those key accounts. It's what can I give to them that makes them feel uh, to your point, Amanda, special and 
uh, you know the customer centricity so that becomes more of a a membership benefits mm. you know what do i give you as my key customers whatever that might be access to the c suite or could it be a number of different things in it and special events that you might invite them to etc yeah. and then as you go down your tail that's where you know a good a good a good loyalty strategy will go well how can i how can i automate some of these things to support my customer service team in building loyalty and also understand that even within that but those big accounts there's going to be multiple touch points within the organization and some of them you know some of them when you were in a big contract actually might be sort of agnostic to you or, or sort of antagonistic to you it's like i'm i begrudgingly am your customer because procurement of got a five-year deal with you so you have this weird thing whereas <laughs> in the consumer world your loyalty is to a person and the emotions that go around it whereas in the business world i might not like like dealing with you but i have to through to i get a great customer experience from you so it's about it's about working out every i, I would literally think every business is different so it's about understanding what is the drivers in your business what are the metrics that you can apply to those behaviors and the bigger the business it's going to be more around i've got so many touch points in the organization so i need to reward the behaviors um and then if i'm rewarding the behaviors who gets to spend those rewards so you've got all of that complexity and i'm as i said earlier you might be in a regulated business so i can't be seen to be taking anything that looks like a an, in, uh, an inducement or a bribe or you know those things will don't just don't sit in our in our policies well that's fine There'll be there'll be things that you can redeem them on that could be services, warranties, or charitable donations. Mm. And there's a lot going on in the sustainability agenda, where if you can if you can help your customer drive their sustainability agenda, then that's going to be very positive in our drive towards net zero. And it's become a really big topic in the in the coming years. So I think the simple answer is no customers. There's no one solution for one customer. There's just uh, it's about understanding them and working out how you can help them keep the customers they've got. Brilliant. I, th I think that's a key takeaway from this, that, uh, that, that your strategy needs to reflect the different types and the different needs of, of customers. I really loved what I heard about, you know, what is a valuable that you want to recognize in some way, because it's not just the revenue. Uh, there are other things. There, there are behaviours. There are, there are, there are uh, events, things like that that you that you value. And um, but for me, kind of underlying it all uh, in the B two B space, um, we mustn't take loyalty for granted. And I, I think that's that 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 has come through as well. I've seen companies that do take, particularly as you said, Amanda, in that key account space, they do take loyalty for granted. But we mustn't, particularly in the yeah. current environment. So um, that concludes our, uh, our discussion. What we've heard today uh, fits really well with the purpose of Customer Attune, which is to build a culture of customer centricity that's based on trust to establish sustainable, mutually beneficial and profitable B2B relationships. I hope that what you've heard today helps you on your customer centricity journey. If you'd like to hear or find out more, please go to our website, which is customerattune.com where you can find links to Mark and Amanda's websites, uh, the rest of the series, and also see what else we do at Customer Attuned. Thank you for listening. And thanks again, Amanda and Mark, for speaking today. Yeah.